Hey everyone, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik for the last week of February and going into the first part of March. This is our semi-weekly, semi-monthly program that we call the What I Want to Know show. And we're talking about, we always talk about different topics. We've covered severe weather in Skywarn. This time around, we're talking a little bit more about our efforts in the classroom. That if teachers would like to have us come out from News 12 and visit your facilities, your students. We'd like to talk a little bit more about that. You can find out more through my various social media pages at the bottom of the screen. Questions, concerns, ideas, or to contact me about this program, hit us up at aonic at wdef.com. If you would like to have myself or Chip Chapman come out and visit your facility, head to wdef.com slash weather for more details and to fill out a form, all the details about where, when, how many students, how many classes you have, things like that. What we're going to be doing this time around is going to be giving you just a general idea as to what we do and how we do it, at least myself. I'm the new kid on the block here. I'm sure Chip Chapman has his own basic program that he goes through, but we'll talk a little bit more about what to expect with the different grade levels and where to get the more information again on our website for more details on that. I'm big into education. The lady on my left is my wife, Melissa, science teacher of excellence and extraordinaire. Lady on the right hand side on that picture is her one of her best friends from teaching, Renee Baum. That's a picture from back at Bartlett City Schools, Bartlett, Tennessee, just northeast of Memphis to where I did many presentations as meteorologist from the, my former station and then also was a substitute teacher in the Bartlett school system as well. So I had a good time interacting with the students there and able to talk about many different subjects, especially science related stuff, which being a science geek at heart is something that I usually have no problem at all talking to various age levels about. We can get Again, a connection started with the kids that are very young, and that's where we get a lot of our presentations, but we have a slightly different type of presentation for the younger kids than we do for the older ones. Again, we do a lot of reading for the kids, especially for, again, those who are in pre-kindergarten, uh, kindergarten through about first grade, somewhere in there. I love literacy and talking about how important reading is, and that's one of the things that I do. One of the th books that is most uh, popular out there is Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and I will not refuse a chance to read that, but uh, suggesting to the teachers that there are other books out there about weather, uh, some that I have read at various Dr. Seuss's birthday celebrations or talking to the kids about what's going on with weather and reading and how important that is. The Rain Came Down is one of the ones that I did in Bartlett not too long ago from David Shannon, and from when I was very young, this is one of my favorites called Dory and the Weather Box about Dory the Little Witch, her cat Gink, all by Patricia Coombs. And this particular story talks about Dory messing around where she shouldn't have a common theme in that area. And it fascinated me way back when I was about three years old to think about controlling the weather. So really kind of cool to be able to see something like that going on. And this was a very cool book to have around and one of my favorites for reading purposes out there. So again, talking to the pre-kindergartners, the younger groups, again, from roughly anything beyond second grade downwards, uh, because the kids at that age level are not going to be comfortable seeing a full hour's worth of presentation when it comes to weather. We can talk about weather safety. Uh, we can talk about what to do, what not to do, why we become scared of severe weather. And a lot of adults are scared of severe weather as well. And when the teachers in the room when I ask the question, who in here is a little scared of severe weather when it comes through and some of the adults raise their hand, that does kind of help the kids learn that even they, their adult leaders, are a little scared sometimes of stuff like that. And that kind of helps them in a way. We talk about weather and what jobs depend on information about weather, about astronauts, about postal delivery, about farmers, different jobs like that on there. But because the kids 
are, again, a little bit on the younger side. The presentations are really not going to go much more beyond about 20 minutes or so. So we have a slightly different format when it comes to talking about weather for the younger kids on there. And again, reading a couple of books is something that might help them more than anything else to understand who I am as, as a, a practicing meteorologist, why I'm so interested in weather and get them on a more relatable level of certain things like that. So that's a little bit more about what we do with the younger kids. Now, going upwards in grades, say about second grade, all the way through middle school and or high school, we can do some experiments. Unfortunately, I can't do this one anymore because uh, the Van de Graaff generator that I did have has basically uh, bit the dust. It's not really working too well anymore, and I left it back in Memphis at the Pink Palace Museum and Planetarium. But if anybody has a uh, spare Van de Graaff generator, we'd love to talk turkey with you to see if we can get that to borrow it to uh, take it around at various places. Using something like this to demonstrate static electricity and how lightning actually is ginormous bolts of static electricity and the electricity that you generate when you walk someplace and you get that zap from somewhere you're creating a little miniature lightning bolt about a trillion times smaller than the actual ones you see from a thunderstorm in nature. And that's the thing that kids can relate to on things like that. As you get up into the higher grade levels, we do talk a little bit more, at least I do, talking about the origins of meteorology as a science. Where did that term come from? What does it mean? What can we use it for today? Again, the meteorologist is not just seen on and in a television station, there are many different places to where jobs where weather is going to be dependent upon climate jobs, climatology, paleoclimatology, delivery, uh, the FedEx uh, shipping system over in Memphis. They have an entire uh, building's floor dedicated to meteorology, getting your packages to where they need to go to on time and safely, and meteorology helps to make certain that costs are kept low. So that's one of the things that we can talk about where the kids want to know a little bit more about where that came from. We also tend to throw in a ton more information about other things involving uh, science, including the mathematics of how we get the forecast. I don't just rip and read, rip and the copy from the National Weather Service and talk about it. This is actually what you're looking at here where you see, again, the temperature over a several couple of days time periods, wind gust and wind speed in some areas, possibility of snow, rain showers, things like this. This, this. this is an actual forecast for Hamilton County, for Chattanooga and Lookout Mountain. And this is one of the things that I display for the kids to take a look at so they can come up, examine this, and give their own forecast all within just a couple of minutes. So they get an opportunity to see a little bit more about what goes on by using the tools that I use to tell you about what's going on with the weather. So we can talk about weather history. We can talk a little bit more about the science of meteorology, reading forecast maps. Uh, that's a positive step forward to be able to say that we don't just pull it out of thin air. We get information that's measured across the country on there. We talk about weather safety. We have some powerful videos about tornadoes striking various places and the important things to remember about where to go to and what to do and to get prepared for severe weather. Uh, becoming a Skywarn volunteer, how they can do that, how that looks awfully good on a resume, and of course weather radios. We talk a little bit more about why those are important to have in your school, in your home, in your place of worship, all sorts of places like that. And that's just a minimal bit of topics there. If there's something more you want to tackle on there when it comes to topics from your grade level expectations, anything of that nature, let us know and we'll see if we can adapt the program. I have a MacBook with a connector. I do not have a projector, so I had to borrow yours on there and your speakers if you'd like to hear a little bit more of the audio that we have of those tornado videos and other things that require the audio on there. That's again just a small portion of what I can do when it comes to this type of information. So again thanks to Food City for sponsoring our Weather in the Classroom segment and if you'd like to take part in this and get us out and about in the community the school year is drawing to a close. We'll be doing this again coming up next year and that there's summer school going on. We would love to consider that. Go to WDEF.com slash weather. Click on weather in the classroom from the drop down menu and you'll be able to see a little bit more 
about what's going on with our program, how you can get involved. Send us your information, uh, your class locations, school locations, class sizes, things like that. Let us know if it's a big group or a small group, and then we'll be able to figure out and cross-coordinate on times on that. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. This has been a special edition of the What I Want to Know show, sponsored by Food City for our Weather in the Classroom segments. And again, more details, send me an email at aonic at wdef.com and find out more at wdef.com slash weather. Thanks for joining us for this week's What I Want to Know show.